subject came up, I got to read something that was a news item just as of today. Members of Congress have a collective investment in the military and industrial complex of one hundred and ninety six thousand one hundred and ninety six million dollars. And John Kerry, Democrat, is the largest stakeholder. So take that with you. So you think that you think that our Congress is, is actually going to uh, institute any programs that are really going to slow down imperialism in the Middle East? No. no. Don't bet on it. No. Don't bet on it. I don't care what Barack Obama says or anybody else says. When you got a figure like that, he's CFR scum anyway. This I mean. is uh, tracing uh, what I just mentioned and Amy Goodman, where she gets her money and where Soros compares. Yeah, you might take a look at that. Did you bring that? Yeah. Um, I know it's a little bit late to throw my two cents in here, but you were talking about the government's official story earlier. There, as far as I'm concerned, there is no government official story. If if you um, look at the 9/11 Commission report, it doesn't say investigation. It doesn't say criminal investigation. It says informal inquiry. No one had to no one had to swear under oath under perjury. It's an informal inquiry. So when people get in get when you get into this dialogue with people, say there is no government official story. Okay, there's an informal inquiry. There's been no criminal investigation. I mean, Mayor Giuliani was an ex prosecutor. He knows something about the fact that it's a felony to destroy evidence. Okay, they carted off all that steel before it could be examined. Violation you know? of crime scene protocol. Yeah, it's 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 a it's, felony. It's, it's a felony. Yeah, like. There, there's multiple felonies committed uh, involving just the removal of all the material before it could be uh, and they examined. Gave orders to yeah, that yeah. Evidence away wasn't that a crime? Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. I mean, and it's against federal law to uh, disturb a crime scene. And that's all. That's one well, one thing I was the, the wanting to say. around that commission. Yes. You go through all the, the Hamilton Keene Commission yeah. for Keen. who they were connected with. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I was going to say also, when people ask me when they make that comment, when Brent mentioned 9 11 and they get this negative reaction, I say, it's not, a, I'm not interested in conspiracies because I am not a believer. I'm interested in looking at the facts and drawing a conclusion. Well, what we need to look at is that whole committee, and we talked about this Saturday. There wasn't one scientist on that commission, not one. So how in the world could they have been accurate and a bit, you know, have the ability to call scientists and architects and engineers conspiracy theorists? The other point I wanted to make was, in light of that, was that in brain theory, which Leiker talks about from Rushkoff's studies and Everett's studies about the brain, the left brain makes up stories faster than the right brain will even integrate them. And so he went to a party, as Wicker did, Grace Wicker, and uh, there was uh, an architect that came in, and, and so was Wicker asked her suddenly, how do you think those buildings came down? And she said, oh, by fire. <laughs> and I said, you and he says, you just made that up. Well, I guess I did. In other words, we want out of this threshold, we want to make up something to fill in what seems comfortable. Yeah. That seems comfortable to well, even, separate even, us from yeah. the possible pain that isn't it may this, cause us. <laughs> isn't it strange that no building has ever fell down in history from None. burning in fire? But you no, can make it plausible to yourself. I'm an engineer and mm. I, you know, I thought about it for a long time, but I Did started you? reading the NIST report and I said, you know, that sounds pretty plausible because they take you close enough Thanks. to what could have happened to where if you're a technical person you could say, yeah, that kind of maybe could have happened until you, you know, you got to really bore into the dark well, there thing. Well, there were three, there were three reports. All. Well, I got the whole thing downloaded, all of it. You got FEMA report, yeah. Yeah. and you got NIST report. Yeah. Well, you notice oh. the NIST report, just like Richard Gage pointed yeah. out, doesn't take you to the actual collapse. No. It only takes you right up to it, not explaining why that's what true. happened during the collapse that would have negated everything you about read the, the whole official thing story? To figure that out, and that's yeah. you know yeah. thousands and thousands of pages. Yeah. Yeah. Not only has no building in history collapsed from a uh, steel building collapsed from fire, but on one day three, yeah. according to the official story, <laughs> collapsed all within a period of less than twelve hours. Mm -hmm. I got a point about the 9/11 Commission. It's just kind of been occurring and kind of bugging me in the back of my mind that if. If the official story needs corroboration and a seed planted in the public 
mind, there couldn't have been any better piece of theater than Condi Rice and her memo about bin Laden determined to strike in the U.S. So they have to admit to a lesser, you know, failing, which is that, oops, we screwed up and let us happen. And well, so the people are saying, well, those, in, those incompetent people, and they should be saying, incompetent. Yeah, yeah, those, that's, those, that's those a criminal big, people. Big, that's, a big, that's a big excuse to follow 9-11 uh, story, is that all of these people, including Bush, are all just incompetent. Yeah, you right, know, And they right, just make human right. mistakes, my goodness. Yeah, right. um, so you create, you let enough of the truth out, and then you put this propaganda out, and you create what's called a cognizant... Cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. Everybody understand that content? And coincidentally, the Air Force was stood down and they couldn't they were also uh, attack targeted. planes. It was attacking mm -hmm. the Pentagon and the towers and the buildings. And yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. though they were in And they yeah. had hours to, <laughs> yeah. to react. Norman Mineta <laughs> testified to that. Usually they can react know? in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. What a coincidence. Um, I wanted to focus just a moment on the uh, Presidential Emergency Operating Center. <clears throat> you were there uh, for a good part of the day. I think you were there with the Vice President. And uh, we had that order given, I think it was by the President, that uh, authorized uh, the shooting down of commercial aircraft that were suspected to be controlled by terrorists. Um, were you there when that order was given? No, I, I was not. I was made aware of it uh, during the time that the airplane coming in to the Pentagon, uh, there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the, the plane is 50 miles out, the plane is 30 miles out. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Well, at the time, I didn't know what all that meant. And um, the flight you're referring to is the, the flight that came into the Pentagon. Pentagon. Yeah. 